I'm Michelle Leahy with Reedy Press, and joining me today is Jonah McDonald. Jonah is an Atlanta writer, storyteller, historian, park naturalist, and um, author of our new book, Secret Atlanta, A Guide to the Weird, Wonderful, and Obscure. Thanks, Jonah, for joining us today. Yeah, good to see you, Michelle. I was yeah. hoping we'd get to see each other in Atlanta, but uh, here's where we are today. We are social distancing, yes. Um, so, Jonah, I'm super excited about your book. How did you pick the places in your book that were um, secret? When I started writing a book called Secret Atlanta and started telling people that, everybody said, oh, that's perfect for you. You love treasure hunts. Yeah. Uh, but I realized that it was really important for it not just to be my list of treasure hunts because that might leave some folks out. It might leave out communities, folks that have different identities than myself. So I started trying to ask everybody I met, what's the thing you know of that you don't think other people know of? And what it meant was I had a great conversation starter. So as I would meet people, I'd say, guess what I'm doing? And I need your help. And so within the book, there's a lot of things that I knew about um, that I consider hidden or secret or off the beaten path. But there were also um, a huge number of people here in Atlanta that gave me tips into things that I didn't know about. So it was also a scavenger hunt for me learning new things. Yeah. What was the weirdest place that you discovered? <sighs> So with my first book, which is called Hiking Atlanta's Hidden Forest, people always ask me, what's your favorite hike? And that's the hardest question because I love them all. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing in secret Atlanta? That's a hard one. So let me give a try here. Mm -hmm. Just south of Atlanta, there is a small highway between two very small towns. And on the side of the highway, there's a big sign that says Barbie Beach. And there is a couple that in their front yard has put a whole bunch of sand out in the front yard. And they have, I'd say probably over 50 Barbie dolls, <laughs> most of them without clothes, all set up in a diorama doing different activities. Uh, it's called Barbie Beach and it's become kind of a, a thing that people go to in this small highway between two small towns. It became so popular that uh, the crew for the TV show, The Walking Dead, mm -hmm. got very excited about how quirky this was and donated uh, a dozen zombie Barbie dolls to the couple that's put this, uh, this Barbie beach together. And so now it's not only you know, UGA cheerleader Barbies and uh, beach volleyball Barbies, but it's all, there's also some zombie Barbie dolls as well, courtesy it. of uh, The Walking Dead. I love it. That is definitely something that um, people wouldn't know if they didn't have a copy of your book, right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want your book to tell readers about Atlanta? Like, what do you want to get across? Yeah. Well, you know, the way that we're approaching this, talking about the weirdest things, the oddest things, is not all of what this book is. I really want this book to be something that also kind of says a message about Atlanta. You know, so many people say, you know, Atlanta is about the Braves, it's about Coca-Cola, it's about hip hop, um, but that's not just what Atlanta is. And so what I tried to do was to demonstrate kind of a bigger picture of what Atlanta is. So it is these weird things. Did you know that Atlanta was, is the site of the first ever time capsule? Uh -huh. So it's, a, it's an, a, an unusual, strange story that most people don't think about, but also we think about the famous things in Atlanta, and I try to find the, the off the beaten path stories about the more famous things. And then also there's some historical stories of Atlanta that have uh, been forgotten. And I wanna lift up some of those history stories too. So within the book, it's gonna be something where you'll, you can get excited about some of these weird oddities and scratch, you know, head scratchers. But there's also gonna be some places in the book that really make you think make you look at Atlanta through a different lens um, and think about Atlanta maybe differently than you originally did. Yeah. So, well, in this time of social distancing, I did notice mm -hmm. something about your book where, um, is there really an, an elephant graveyard in Atlanta? Uh, surprisingly, there is. Um, it is not marked anymore, mm -hmm. but there is this very strange story um, about how Atlanta kind of got its first zoo animals. 
One of the wealthiest members of Atlanta society was a man named Asa Candler Jr. If you've heard the Candler name before, it's because his family uh, was the ones who really got Coca-Cola company off the ground. So this is possibly the wealthiest person um, uh, in Atlanta at the time. I don't know exactly who was the wealthiest, but I wouldn't be surprised if Asa Candler Jr. was. Um, and so with his wealth, he not only bought a cemetery, the largest cemetery in Atlanta, but he also bought a whole bunch of exotic animals. He put them into kind of a menagerie zoo on his, at his own mansion. And then it got so smelly, a couple of the monkeys got loose and there were all these loud noises, the neighbors complained. And so he donated his zoo to the Atlanta Zoo. And that's how Atlanta uh, got its first zoo animal. So that's just a background behind this, Atlanta, this, this uh, elephant graveyard though, right? So Atlantans had been visiting these elephants, um, uh, 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 Coco and, and, uh, uh, and, and Penny for, for years and years and years. Coco was of course named after Coca-Cola mm -hmm. um, because of Asa Candler's uh, family. When Coco died, the zoo realized um, not only where do you put an elephant body, but also people love this elephant so much, they really don't, uh, uh, they don't wanna lose that connection. So the city buried the elephant in a graveyard just outside of town and put a plaque up to, so people could actually go pilgrimage to the burial site of their favorite elephant. Wow. Now people were doing that for years and years and years, but over the years, people forgot about it. You know, once, once the generation passed that had actually been visiting Coco in the zoo, uh, the, the, the headstone was either stolen or removed. And finally, a few people who had heard the story went and found the location. And now there's just like a little handwritten sign up that says, uh, uh, you know, here are elephants are buried on the side of a road that looks like you're out in the country. But it's, uh, it's actually on property owned by the city of Atlanta right here inside the perimeter. Wow, might be something to do to get outside a little bit. Just do um, it solo. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so tell me about, I see your park ranger uh, uniform. Tell me about what is a park naturalist? Well, th that's the thing is that my official job title, I work for DeKalb County, which is one of the primary counties here in the metro area as a uh, park naturalist. But the moment I tell people that, they say, oh, does that mean you run around naked in the woods? <laughs> so, so it's much better just to call me Ranger Jonah. I'm a park ranger, I have a park ranger hat. Um, but it, what it means by being a naturalist is I'm really an educator. And as you can tell from hearing some of the stories from my book, what I love to do is share stories, to share information and help people look at their city through a different lens. And so when I'm being a park ranger, one of the things that I'm trying to demonstrate to the Atlanta community is we are not just a city with pavement and traffic and big buildings, but we're also a city where you can get deeply connected to nature really close to home. And of course, that's what I wrote my first book about, Hiking Atlanta's Hidden Forests. But Secret Atlanta also includes a lot of those uh, things to change your mind about Atlanta, uh, to make your, you know, scratch your head or to um, um, wonder, uh, to remember, and also to celebrate things that people may not have been remembering, celebrating, or scratching their head at in a long time. Sure, yeah. So what would you say, who is your targeted audience for Secret Atlanta, A Guide to the Weird, Wonderful, and Obscure? Everybody in the world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, perhaps not. The, the, the targeted audience is really people who, have, who live here in Atlanta, are rooted in the space, people who are just arriving, and then also people who are coming, but don't necessarily just want to do the typical tourist attractions. Yeah, yeah. The book was just released about a week ago, and I've already gotten a whole bunch of orders. And it's really fun to get emails from people saying, I have lived in this city my whole life. I was born and raised here. And I am so excited to learn these new tidbits about the city that I've lived in my whole life. Yeah. And then the other thing I hope for is even if you're just visiting Atlanta for the very first time, and I really hope you go to the King, the King Center. And I really hope that you go to the Georgia Aquarium and the Center for Civil and Human Rights. But if you get my book, you're also going to find those things that when you get back home, 
you'll be able to tell some stories that people were not expecting you to tell. Yeah, I love it. Well, where can people go to pick up a copy of your book? Well, right now it's just being sent out to all the bookstores, but because of coronavirus, there's so many bookstores that are closed. Right. Um, however, almost all the local bookstores here in Atlanta are doing mail order. Some of them are even doing delivery. Uh, Little Shop of Stories in Decatur is actually delivering books to certain zip codes. I know that Karis Books and More is, uh, is mailing books out. You can also go to my website, which is secretatlanta.com. And then of course, I'll personally sign it with a rubber glove on. I'll sign it and then get it in the mail to you right away. Wonderful. All right, Jonah, it was so much fun talking to you today. Thank you so much. Yeah, good to talk to you too, Michelle.